In the first part in the Spiritual Warfare series, we spoke about the spiritual world and doorways. We discussed that ignoring the spiritual world is something that we should never do, and that in order for demons to get into a person and dwell in their bodies, an opening in the protective hedge must be made, and it is sin that breaks a hole in the protective hedge. Many times, allowing a demon to actually enter into a person committing the sin. We can call those holes doorways. And we discussed some of the different doorways, but there are many more. That was a good icebreaker for us, understanding that what we do in the physical also reflects in the spiritual world. So we always must be on guard and focused on our actions and what we allow in our lives and what we set our mind upon. The books, He Came to Set the Captives Free and Prepare for War, both by Rebecca Brown, are excellent books that can prepare us to engage in spiritual warfare and they really help explain the spiritual battles that we face. I strongly recommend these books. In this part of the Spiritual Warfare series, I'm going to speak from the book He Came to Set the Captives Free. I can talk to you all day about all the risks that we face. And believe me, there are a great many of them. I can make videos and always point out wickedness to you. And that's not hard, because we live in a purely wicked satanic world. But I do not want to only awaken you and then leave you defenseless. I have a video that speaks about how to use the armor of God. That is an important video in beginning to understand how to fight in the spirit. And if you have not watched it, please do. But we should go deeper in our training. So we are going to discuss more on how to fight in the spirit. In her book, Rebecca Brown gives steps that should be taken by anyone entering into spiritual warfare. And I think that they are important to share. Because again, as believers, we must be soldiers able to fight and war in the spirit. So while I'm able, I want to do what I can to better equip the church. Let's begin. So listen, we are living in a world run by Satan and time is running out. Satan is becoming bolder and bolder. We can see his influence growing day by day and getting stronger and stronger. As believers, we are not called to be weak pacifists. We are not sheep led to the slaughter. Though that's how Satan likes to try to characterize us, because we do not fight in the flesh the way he desires us to. Satan knows that when he gets us to act out in our flesh, no matter who wins the fight, he is always winning. What he does not want us to do is fight against him in the spirit, and he has worked diligently to suppress the power of the spirit in the church. But we are called to be soldiers. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. As we take up the power and authority Yahshua has given us in his name, and take the offensive in warfare against Satan, the persecution that inevitably will come will not come in the way that we think. People will not come at you and say, We are slandering you because of your stand for Jesus. No, you will be accused of doing all sorts of things that you did not do, of being too radical, or maybe becoming too unbalanced in your mind. One thing the world is definitely setting us up for is accusations of being sick, mentally ill. They're going to say that we need help in the areas of mental health because we believe the word over their science and we don't believe their lies. They are right now setting up a scapegoat of mental health that will be used against us in the near future. We will also be discredited by fellow Christians, even more so than non-believers. When I was first waking up, I was not ready for that. I expected many Christians to be happy that I was now reading my Bible and taking my faith seriously. But they were the first ones to really turn on me and make me feel isolated. So you should expect it. Satan always deceives and lies. Some of his most effective servants are those who are supposedly the strongest Christians, the regular churchgoers the financially successful, and the respected and revered members of our communities. Those people will be the ones who will accuse and persecute those fighting in spiritual warfare. But always remember what Yahshua said. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets 
who were before you. That's Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. Anyone involved in spiritual warfare must be prepared to fight more than one area. But remember, you do not control how or where you fight. Only our master controls that. We simply make ourselves available to him to use us as he chooses. As soldiers, he is our commanding officer. Our goal is always to do the will of Yeshua the Messiah, to bring glory to his name, and to bring others to a saving knowledge of him. These are seven steps that should be taken by anyone seriously entering spiritual warfare. 1. You must accept total mastership of Jesus in every area of your life. When you say that you submit to him, actually mean it. Don't hide things from him or say, I'm going to keep him out of this area because I don't want to give this up. It is ironic how people can say that they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord is another word for master. They accept him as their Lord and Savior, but then they don't let him be Lord, master of everything. Don't be this type. When you don't submit totally, the devil knows this. And that warfare you're engaging on him, it will backfire on you because he will enter through the part of your life you have kept off limits of our father. You must accept total mastership of Yahshua in every area of your life. Number two, you must be willing for a total dealing of the cross in your life. You must bear the cross. This must be an ongoing day-by-day -day experience. We must prepare ourselves for an ordeal of suffering in some measure like that of our Savior. There are too many believers tranquilized by false teachers that do not prepare them to bear their crosses. So many believers that are relying on our faith to bring us wealth and prosperity. So many believers that expect praise only from the world and no rebuke. Yahshua said, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's Luke chapter 9 verse 23. And he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Matthew chapter 10 verse 38. Let those words sink in. What happened to the first apostles that initially followed Yahshua? They were all persecuted. What happened to the early church? They were persecuted. Now look at today. What has happened to the modern day church? They are growing larger and larger while their power is diminishing. Today's church is not prepared to put it all on the line for the kingdom of God, and it shows. Don't be a believer that does not expect tribulation or suffering. You are an enemy of this world. You cannot engage in spiritual warfare and not expect the enemy to try to fight back against you. Those that don't understand this will be the ones that will accept the mark of the beast when it is presented as their only option to survive. Yahshua said, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. That's Luke chapter 9 verse 24. If you are engaging in spiritual warfare, matter of fact, if you are a believer, period, you must be willing to bear the cross. Number three, you must learn to hear the Lord speak to you in your spirit and then listen to his voice. This does not mean an audible voice which you hear with your physical ears like you're hearing my voice right now. This is like when the Lord says something to your spirit and then suddenly it flashed into your mind in the form of a thought. That is one reason why it is so important to scrutinize our thoughts and ask the Lord to keep our minds and hearts pure. This is why the devil has made so many distractions like all the music, television, sports, and movies. If he can cloud your mind and pollute your thoughts, he can suppress God's voice in your spirit. The Holy Spirit will put thoughts into our minds. That is how he speaks to us and is a witness to us. Satan can also flash thoughts into your minds. You must remember that the Holy Spirit will confirm to your heart and spirit what is from Satan and what is not. This is another reason why it is so important to know scripture. The Lord will never tell you anything that is not consistent with his word. Satan always will. Only the Holy Spirit can teach you to hear his voice. You may have to seek this type of relationship with fasting and prayer. Our Father never does things in a hurry. And do not be surprised if he tests you to see how sincere you are. If you are not totally committed to him, you will not be able to develop such a relationship. Now, when the Lord does speak to you and you have checked to see that what was said is consistent with the Bible and the Holy Spirit confirms to your heart that you did indeed hear his voice, you must listen to it. 
And this is where many people fall off. Satan can try to persuade you that you did not really hear from the Lord, that you were only imagining things. You must not listen to that. If he is communicating with you, but you are not trusting that it is him, you then go into disobedience. It will not bear the fruit that you were purposed to bear. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. The Holy Spirit will speak to us if we will hear his voice. Then when we do, we must not harden our hearts, but step out in faith and obedience in accordance with what the Holy Spirit has said to us. Usually, the Holy Spirit starts speaking to a believer by bringing to his or her attention something that is not pleasing to our Father. The temptation is to ignore this communication and continue doing whatever it is the Lord is not pleased with. If you do this, you are hardening your heart and may stop further communication from him. The Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit that what you have heard is from him. If what you hear is not from him, learn to be sensitive to the hesitation or check you will feel. For me, I often receive a certain pain in my chest when I'm around too much evil and wickedness, and I have learned to listen to that check, and that has often protected me from digging too deep into things I shouldn't have or going places that I shouldn't go. We are often too anxious to go ahead even though we are hearing caution in our spirit. We must learn to be patient and wait for confirmation before taking any action. Impulsiveness cannot have any part in spiritual warfare. Learn to hear the Lord speak to your spirit and then listen to his voice. Number four, you must learn to control your mind. This will probably be one of the hardest things you will ever do. The mind is a major battlefield. Satan attacks everyone in their mind more than any other way. This battle is unceasing, unrelenting, and will continue as long as we live here on earth. We cannot be lazy and just allow thoughts to just run through our mind. I'm always getting at my oldest son for this, because with all that I show him, he still doesn't control his mind, and he allows distractions to take a hold of him. When we do this, we are being a tool. Your phone, some of your music, your social media feed, your chat groups, the news, sports, entertainment of all kinds, etc., etc., they are all intended to grab portions of your mind so that you do not always control your mind and thoughts. When we know Satan is working to limit and distract us, but we still give him authority to do so, we are only to blame when we are not producing the right fruit in our lives. We are responsible before God to stop and scrutinize every thought that goes through our minds to decide if it is obedient to Christ. We can't just be believers and then give Satan free control of our minds without check. That's the reason why Satan loves using entertainment to program us, because we often turn off our brains and then allow him to send whatever thoughts and suggestions he wants to reprogram us with. Everyone has a continual thought life going on in his or her mind. We are responsible to bring every one of those thoughts captive to Yahshua the Messiah. You must understand that Satan can inject thoughts into our mind, just as the same as a doctor can inject medicine into our bodies. Satan and his demons can do this from outside your body. They do not have to be inside of you to do this. But they cannot read your mind. And that's why things like social media are so important to them. They like to know what everyone is thinking. Satan will put thoughts into your mind, starting with the word, I, to make you think that the thought was originated by you. For instance, a thought may come such as, I sure would like to do blank. Something you know is a sin. Because it starts with I, you think that the thought originated from you, but this is an attack of spiritual wickedness provoking you to sin. As soon as you realize such a thought is in your mind, you need to attack the real source. Out loud, say something like, Satan and you demons, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not accept that thought. Go away. Then force yourself to think about scripture. Recite a scripture out loud if necessary to get control of your mind. We must literally retrain and renew our minds. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Learn to control your mind. Number five, scripture memory is important. Your words I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Psalms chapter 119, verse 11. 
The way to hide God's word in your heart is memorize it. This can't be emphasized enough. You obviously do not need to memorize the whole Bible, but you should have verses that you love and are helpful to you memorized. I memorize scripture by reading the same things continuously, but you can always pick scriptures and say them aloud every day until they are in your memory. You need scripture on hand when you are going against the enemy. This is your sword. If you do not have any scripture ready when you are going against the enemy, you are weaponless. Imagine going to fight in a war without a weapon. Memorize scripture. Number six, never forget you are under God's authority. Unless we learn to obey God's direct authority, we will lose many battles because we will neither hear nor obey our captain, Yahshua. The Most High joins his children together through his authority. If any one of his children is independent and self-reliant, not subject to God's authority, then that one can never accomplish the work of God on earth. Remember, you are not operating in spiritual warfare on your own power and authority. Never forget you are under God's authority. Number seven, never underestimate Satan's power. Never forget that the battle is real. So many people feel like they can ignore Satan and he will just go away. They believe that as soon as they accept Christ, they don't have to worry about the devil. Ironically, and by no surprise, it's normally those that hold this mindset that are usually the most deceived and influenced by Satan. He is your adversary, your opponent. Scripture does not say ignore him. It says resist him and he will flee from you. We cannot outwit Satan. We will not figure out all his deceptions. We must remain totally dependent upon the Lord to reveal to us Satan's tactics. Some of them are not ready for us to understand yet until we're spiritually ready for it. We can stand against and overcome Satan only with the power of Yahshua. As soon as someone underestimates Satan and his influence, they become careless and a doorway is open for pride and a multitude of other deceptions. And also, don't give him more power than he actually has. He is not all powerful, so don't think he controls everything because he does not. He wants to appear this way. We as believers actually have more power than him. But when we play his game with his rules, he is winning and therefore makes us powerless. Don't focus on the devil, but don't ignore and underestimate him either. I will post these steps on my website for you to have a copy to always refer to. The link will be in the description box. You must be strong and ready to engage in battle. Do not half step. This is why the wicked have grown so much in influence today. Us as believers are not walking in our full power. We are not being soldiers of Yeshua. We do not operate in his authority. We are not making him master over our lives. We are not willing to bear our crosses. We are not sensitive enough to his voice and are not listening when we hear it. We are not controlling our minds, not reading enough and memorizing scripture. And many of us are either underestimating Satan or giving him too much power and credit. When you review things from this perspective, it's easy to see why the world is covered in so much darkness. We are not operating in our full power. And in these last days, we must reverse this. So many need to hear the word. So many need to be broken from bondage. So many need us to stand in the gap for them. But we cannot do this when we are not fully living in the power and authority that has been given to us. Rise up and take your rightful place as stewards of our Father's kingdom. Walk in the Spirit. Take up your armor of God. Live out the reason you were created for. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like and share this with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. Once again, I sincerely would like to thank all who donate and contribute to this ministry. You have been a true blessing to this ministry and greatly assist me with carrying out this assignment. I praise Yahweh for you. You know who you are. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching. I love you all.